Dearly beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for getting again to this another episode. We appreciate God for his love, for his care, for his protection, for his guidance. And we come with an episode where we actually trust and believe God that he's a God who makes a way where there seems to be no way. And that one is a biblical portion. And God makes a way where there seems to be no way. And so I bring you a personality like many others in the Bible that we have looked at before and we look after, we look at this one again also and we shall continue because I treasure these biblical personalities with whatever they did, with whatever they went through, with whatever they said, with their actions. And God desires us, people who are living in this generation, to pick something from his word, to pick something from these persons whom we are calling personalities that lived their time here on earth, believing and trusting in God's goodness, in God's love, in God's care, the favor of the Lord being upon them, and it happens for us as well. And the person is the lady whose name is Esther. Remember that in the Bible, we have two females whose names are titles of books. We have this particular one that I'm mentioning. Esther is a book. And then we have another one whom we have already had time to talk about. And this was called Ruth, who was a nanny Jew, a Moabite lady. But because God orchestrates things, God works out great things in ways that nobody can understand, Ruth becomes a personality that her name stands out and it is titled Ruth the book. Now here we have Esther, another lady. And you know, the culture of the Jews gave little prominence to the ladies. Of course, they were very important people, but this one stand out, Esther. But of course, actually, when you read about Esther, her background could not guarantee her to be this kind of personality in the Bible. Could not guarantee her name to sound the way it does. But God, who makes a way where there seems to be no way, she's talked about as an orphan, whose parents died much earlier and she was taken care of by a relative. And this relative was called Mordecai. Can you imagine? And from those very humble beginnings, the reason why I said God makes a way where there seems to be no way. And so let us read something about how it begins. And the person that we're talking about is Esther, the book, of course, a woman that I've already said, and these times happened. Of course, they mentioned the names of the kings that reigned at, the, at that time. And this time, still, they were not in their homeland. They were away. And they were actually being ruled by the great emperors, the great men that had conquered. And this time is also Persia. But of course, I could have mentioned other kingdoms like Babylon, and the time of Jesus Christ was the Romans and very many others that had come to conquer the people of Israel. And now let me just read a few verses from chapter one of the book of Esther. Now, that now in the days of Ahasuerus, the Ahasuerus who reigned from India to Ethiopia over 127 provinces. In those days when King Ahasuerus sat on his royal throne in Susa, the citadel. In the third year of his reign, he gave a feast for all his officials and servants. The army of Persia and Media and the nobles and governors of the provinces were before him. While he showed the riches of his royal glory and the splendor and the pomp of his greatness for many days, one hundred and eighty days. And when these days were completed, 
the king gave for all the people present in Susa, the citadel, both great and small, a feast lasting for seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. Now, these are the circumstances. Now, they served the drinks in golden vessels in verse 7 of different kinds, and drinking was according to this edict, and they drank. Now, in verse 10, on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehman Biz, Bizda Harbona. These are his servants, complicated names, but they are there. And so he commanded them, the seven eunuchs who served in the presence of the king Ahasuerus, to bring Queen Vashit, Vashut before the king with her royal crown in order to show the peoples and the princesses her beauty, for she was lovely to look at. Now, verse 12, very important now. But Queen Vashut refused to come at the king's command, delivered by the eunuchs. Eunuchs were the servants of the king, male servants that had been castrated in order to serve well in the king's palace. And so these men who were castrated, called eunuchs, went and delivered the message, but the queen, Vashut, declined to come. At this, the king became enraged, and his anger burned within him. Now, look here, in verse 13, then the king said to the wise men who knew the times, for this was the king's procedure toward all who were versed in the law. And now he begins a search for a new queen because this one has let him down. Now remember that actually God does his things in his own way. The king invites the queen so that she comes and walks around to show the beauty, to show the glamour, to show the great things. But listen to me. The queen declined. Now, as she declines, opportunity comes. So this was a lavish banquet that actually caused the trouble for the queen. Now, arrangements for beautiful virgins, the pigeant, of course, these days we have uh, beauty pigeons and the people parading themselves and showing themselves beauty. Now, so that he could be able to name the, the next queen. This had been, you know, chased from the queenship, if we can have it that way. And now, Esther comes into picture after a long process. Now, I just want to ask you to read the book of Esther and you'll find actually it was one step after another. Praise the Lord. One step after another. Following one thing after another. Being patient. Now Esther also shows up. Remember, when you read this entire book, she became a focal person. Actually, in Israel. Remember the orphan? Yes. Remember the other little girl? Yes. Remember the other poor person raised under a relative called Mordecai? I just want to ask you again to read this book. It's not a long one. A few chapters. And you discover that God does his things. He, the things actually works by the curtains. And so when you look at a little girl, when you look at a little boy, God may be saying something to you. You know, this little girl, Mordecai did not know that actually she would become this kind of person, the savior of the people of Israel. An orphan, a little girl. So every little person, every child, God has a plan, has a plan for them has a plan for me, has a plan for you. So there came a time when she became this focal person for the salvation of Israel, the nation. 
because there was there were moments when Israel was in total trouble because they were being ruled by a foreign nation and so they were at the verge of genocide they were at the verge of annihilation to be completely wiped out to be completely destroyed and this is when this young lady Esther becomes a focal person in the salvation of her people and because of her beauty because of her stature god used her to be a person to save the people of israel and learn something from esther learn something from mordecai and learn something from the situation the situation in which the people of israel were sometimes situation is come and you lose hope. You think that actually all is gone. All is destroyed. All is finished. But remember that God raises up situations. And when they happen, salvation dawns. Now this lady Esther stands out. And I just want us to pick a few things which I've already mentioned many of them. I've already mentioned many, 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 many of them. But one of them is how Esther and I need to mention to you her other name in Hebrew at the version called Hadassah. Hadassah and something that is beautiful, mato and nice. And then a star, star stands out, someone who stands out. And that's actually a very wonderful name to give our baby girls. Hadassah is the other version. Now, this lady, Hadassah, Esther, star, possessed the courage that saved the entire nation. I was overwhelmed by her courage. I was overwhelmed by her strength. I was overwhelmed by her wisdom. I was overwhelmed by her patience. I was overwhelmed by her trust in her God and how she worked together with her cousin called him uncle, but the man is called Mordecai, and salvation came for the people of Israel. You are where you are, remember, for a purpose. Esther came up, and wherever she was, what she was, she was there for a purpose. And I've discovered this secret, that when God positions you, there's a reason why, there's a purpose for why he has positioned you there. Is it a low office? Is it a high office? Is it whoever you are? There is a purpose, there is a reason. She was an instrument that was used to bring salvation to the people of Israel. She stood out. She stood out of the crowd. She showed, you know, capability to do it. And so I want to ask us, ask you, which position, what are you? That God is positioning you like he did for Esther, despite the circumstances. The circumstances may be so harsh, maybe as an orphan, maybe as a lady, maybe as a poor person, but God has a reason why he does it. Now, God has a purpose in you. I have discovered, friends, that God has a purpose in every person. God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose in you to bring out what he desires to bring out his salvation to his people. Stand out. Don't bow down. Continue trusting and waiting. This lady challenges me the way she waited, the way she came out. And she was an instrument for the salvation of the people of Israel. Esther stood out. And when you read in this chapter 2 verse 15, something great here of course the entire book you can read there but when they had paraded the pigeons the girls to go and show themselves because the queen the king is about to choose the the queen and in 2 15 the bible says eh, when they turn and i know your turn will come when the turn came for esther the daughter of abihail the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his own daughter to go in to the king she asked for another she asked for nothing 
except what Hegai, the king is eunuch, who had the charge of the women, advised. Now, Esther was winning favor, praise the Lord. Esther was winning favor in the eyes of all who saw her. This is the kind of person why she stands out. And the verse 16, you read on and say, when Esther was taken to the king Ahasuerus, in some other versions, they say, Zaxes, into his royal palace in the tenth month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. Listen to me in verse 17. And we praise the Lord for what happened there when Esther presented herself there. The Bible said that the king loved Esther more than all the women, pray the Lord. And she won grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashut. Now, if there is any message that I wanted to bring to you about this personality, this is the message. Her time came, her turn came, she was able to shine. And so, God's hand was clearly seen in all these events. By the way, do you know actually, uh, people read this book, and it is known as a book where the name of God is not mentioned. One day, Sunday school children surprised the church and asked, Tell us the book in the Bible where the name of God is not very clearly mentioned, yet it's in the Bible. And the people looked at themselves. Now here, God works. God works. Even when he's not, his name is not clearly pronounced, praise the Lord. Esther won favor before the king. Her courage, her strength, her beauty. And because God's favor was upon her, salvation came for the people of Israel. Now, one other thing that actually you can pick also from this personality is develop some spiritual discipline. Develop some spiritual discipline of prayer, fasting, trusting God. When times are good and when times are bad, develop that discipline. Pray and fast to acknowledge God's power. Pray and fast to repent of your sins. Pray and fast for every situation that is. Yes, situations have come, but I pick from Esther the discipline of spirituality here. Run to God for rescue. He will and he can. He will and he can fight for you. Now in chapter 4, Verse 15 to 16, this is what she said to, his, to her cousin, Mordecai. And the Bible says that then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and do not drink, do not eat, for three days, night or day. And I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Courage, strength, discipline, this young lady. And in verse 17, Mordecai then did, went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord that actually this is another personality from him who pick something great. He said, I will go, even if it's against the law, but I'm going to talk to the king. I will present myself. You know, she presented, I will present my case. Even if it means death. If I perish, I perish. This is one of the key statements that was made by Esther. And there is power in intercessory prayer. So I want to challenge everyone. Pray. Trust God. 
intercessory prayer. Let other people pray. I can ask you to be to pray for me. Yes, you become an intercessor for me. Yes, I also become an intercessor for you. I pray for you. Pray for me. I pray for you. Because we have so many things that are around us and we need to face them. And so I want to ask you to pray for me and also take charge to pray for you. Praying for one another. And Esther said, you go and pray, but I also will take time to pray. I and my girls. So as I ask you to pray for me, I need to take time and also pray for myself. There are some people who say, pray for me, pray for me, and they're not praying. And so now it is said, pray with me. Because as you are praying, I'm also praying, pray the Lord. And so let us take this discipline as a great discipline. And so that actually uh, God will do something new. And one other lesson from the book of Esther that I want to bring out is about pride, it's about arrogance, it's about hatred, it's about, you know, raising themselves up, oneself above, and then you perish because pride goes before a fall. I want to bring out the man who was going to be, who was promoted in chapter three. He's called Haman. Haman was a great man. He was promoted by the king. And this is another huge lesson that we pick from the book of Esther. And Haman had pride, had arrogance, had hatred for the people of Israel. And his anger was rage, was disastrous for the people of Israel. He planned annihilation. He planned genocide. He planned to destroy all the people of Israel, the Jews. And please read. Read and you'll find actually what he planned turned against him. What he planned turned against him. And the Bible said actually people make holes. They dig traps. They make traps for others. And they eventually they end up falling there themselves. Just continue trusting God. That actually pride and arrogance is a very bad combination. That actually Haman, the man that actually planned the annihilation of the people of Israel. In the book of Esther, we're talking about the book of Esther. Haman ended up on the gallows, on the poles, on the cross, which had put for the people for Mordecai. Now, let people plan the evil, let people do wrong things, and God is going to do. For you, one thing that you have to do, don't lose a step with God. Remain trusting him because Esther did. Trust to other person, prayerful person. He's even asking, ask Come go and pray first for me. And I myself, as with my girls, we shall pray and fast. I pick this lesson that God enables me, enables you to stand your ground in prayer, to stand your ground in your faith. That actually every other plan, every other evil. Of course, you remember Isaiah, where he says, that actually, no weapon, no weapon, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon forged against you shall prevail. And I praise the Lord for that. Now, weapons upon weapons, Haman ended up. So people who plan evil, people who are arrogant, people who practice hate, need to learn a lesson from Haman. Actually, it was wrongly placed. And so God shows us something here. But also remember that God can use anyone. And God can use anyone to stop the evil plans against his people. He used Esther and God turns things around. He works behind the scenes, but he turns things around. And I pray for you that God will turn things around. Just remain trusting, prayerful, and interceding. God can orchestrate life's events to act for you, like it acted for the people of Israel well. And so you face challenges, fear them fearlessly, but with faith. And now remember that God has a purpose and a plan for one's life. Esther was brought up that from the law position, not by chance, but it was on purpose. And so God did something for Esther. He will do something for you. And as you continue on with these biblical persons, pick something. And here, remember that actually there are moments when you have to act. And Esther acted when it may seem impossible. The reason why he said, even if I means to die, I will die. Against, against the common sense, things can 
but you go and do something that actually God will enable you. Trust God. Now, if I perish, I perish. So says Esther. So Esther saved her nation. Esther saved her people. Now, what are you that you are doing for your people? What is it that you are positioning yourself for? May God, who starts good work, start some good work in you as you learn from Esther, as you learn from Hadassah, read this book. There are lessons from Esther as a woman, but there are also lessons from the other man that I talked about, Harman, who was planning annihilation, but God works behind scenes and he saves his people. So may God save you. May God grant you an opportunity to be a person of substance, a person of purpose in your society, in your community, in your church, in your family. Esther stands out and may he stand with you. May he plan with you. Continue praying, continue trusting God. Esther says, pray for me, but I myself must also pray. So pray for me, but I must also pray for myself. I pray for you. You must also pray for yourself. And so may God listen to our prayer. The God who answered Esther, the God who saved the people of Israel at that time, may he save you. Is there anything that you are going through like the people of Israel were? May God hear our prayer. And may we continue on trusting and believing in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you in Jesus' name.